Hello, and welcome to Antera's Easy Setup Guide video. I'm Alyssa, the Marketing Supervisor at Antera Technologies, and today I'm going to share with you a short introduction to Power Over Ethernet technology and an easy guide on how to set up and install an IP PoE camera with an Antera unmanaged switch, specifically the LNP0500. So let's get started. First, what is Power Over Ethernet? As you're probably aware, Power Over Ethernet technology enables ordinary Ethernet cables to transmit data and provide a power source within an Ethernet cable to power up PoE devices. It's a perfect solution for those remote areas which have no power source or where it's difficult to lay out a power line. In 2003, the IEEE standard 802.3 AF for legacy PoE was approved. This standard PoE specification allows the PD or powered device to take a maximum of 12.95 watts and allows a PSC or power sourcing equipment to provide a maximum of 15.4 watts. In 2009 though, IEEE standardized a new standard called 802.3 AT PoE Plus to allow the PSE to deliver max power output of up to 34.2 watts and for the PD to accept a maximum power input of up to 25.5 watts. But what does all that mean? Well, let's look at some common terms in the market and hopefully it will become a bit clearer. A PD, or powered device, is the equipment that receives power input such as an IP camera or voice over IP phone. A PSE, or power sourcing equipment, is the device or equipment that provides a power source to power up to powered devices such as PoE switches, injectors, or Ethernet media converters. Once the PSE is turned on and connected, the user only has to connect an Ethernet cable from the PSE to the PD. Then the PD would be powered up and can transmit data back and forth with the PSE. It's really that easy. Of course, please don't forget that the restriction for the Ethernet cable distance between the PSE and PD is 100 meters or, for those of you who don't work in meters, approximately 300 feet. Okay, then why industrial PoE switches? As you can see, a lot of outdoor applications, such as the picture on the left side with PoE cameras for security surveillance or the access control gate on the right side, all require networking in order to allow the command center to have real-time remote access and monitor the field site conditions. Many security applications also have environmental concerns, making industrial PoE switches the right choice. Like I mentioned previously, outdoor surveillance and other security applications can be in remote locations and have insufficient power source. It requires reliable, rugged, industrial-grade networking equipment in order to perform 24-7 operation and continue to thrive in the future. Antera industrial PoE switches are designed with high-grade components to allow them to operate continuously under any extreme ambient temperature. Last, but certainly not least, as security applications become more complex and the addition of more and more power devices is needed, a high-density Ethernet port version or industrial managed switch will benefit for future remote surveillance network management. Here at Intera, we offer a wide range of PoE and PoE Plus solutions, including unmanaged and managed capabilities, 100 megabit and gigabit bandwidth version, fiber optic options in multi-mode, single mode, and WDM single strand fiber, and even EN50155 M12 slash IP67 ratings for shock vibration and environmental protection. Now let's take a look at Antera's industrial grade design. All Antera industrial PoE switches are either IP30 or IP67 rated for environmental protection. You can easily see what these protections stand for with the chart to the right. Our products can also be found in standard and wide temperature ranges, compact designs, and with flexible mounting. Here at Antera, we know our customers have different application requirements. That's why all our products will provide an extra wall mounting kit and dual power input for power backup redundancy purposes. 
The products also have a built-in relay for fault alarm contact that users can connect with any siren alarm or buzzer to alert a field engineer if any situation occurs so service can be scheduled immediately. Now that you know everything there is to know about PoE, we can finally get to the good stuff. How to install an IP PoE camera with an unmanaged switch. Below, you'll notice the model names of both the camera and switch we are using for your reference, but this is intended to be a guide for any IP camera and unmanaged PoE switch setup. From our experience, most customers setting up PoE cameras are using them for facility surveillance to improve their surveillance system and allow for video streaming through the network. In this scenario, a PoE camera and a PoE switch are required because the camera is most likely located in a remote area with no power source. But we could be mistaken. You could be using that PoE camera to spy on the neighbor's dog because you totally know he's digging a hole in your yard. Whatever the application, this easy setup guide will show you how. First things first. You'll need a few things before starting your setup. Number one, a computer. Number two, your PoE camera. Number three, the software that came with your PoE camera. If you can't find this, contact the manufacturer and see if you can download the software online or have them send it to you via email. Number four, an unmanaged switch, such as Antares LNP0500. And number five, don't forget your AC to DC power supply or your Ethernet cables. If you don't have all these items, it may be in your best interest to stop the video and get them. There's nothing like having to scramble to find something during the extremely important parts of the film. But we all know you love my voice, and you're going to rewatch this anyway. So never fear if you don't have everything checked off your equipment list. You can always grab it later. Now on to step one. First, install your PoE camera software onto your computer. This software installation is required before you can access your PoE camera. Once you've loaded the software, find and double click the .bat file to start the install. Next, go back to the root directory of the CD and open the setup folder. Click on the .exe file. Later on, you can run the software to search and report if the IP address for your camera is available. This will be after you've networked the PoE camera, but let's not worry about the IP address for now. You should be able to change the IP settings at any time by logging into the camera's default IP address. Step 2. Now we can start installing the hardware step by step. Plug your AC to DC power supply into your unmanaged switch in this case the LNP0500. Then connect an Ethernet cable from the LNP0500 to the PoE camera. Lastly, connect an Ethernet cable to your computer or laptop. This procedure is required to avoid any inappropriate power current issues. You certainly don't want to fry any of your equipment. Once the hardware has been successfully connected, step three will be your PC or laptop setup. Because the PoE camera has a default IP address, in this case 192.168.0.10, your laptop or PC is required to have the same subnet in order to access the camera. Your IP address, of course, will be different depending on what type of camera you're using. However, the same rule applies. In order to change the subnet IP for your computer, first type CMD into the search box to open the command prompt. You can see the search bar in, in figure 2.1. Once the command prompt is open, type ipconfig and press enter. The computer's IP information will then be displayed in the command prompt as seen in figure 2.2. Next, you will need to add the camera's IP address into the list of accepted addresses. To do this, go to the start menu and select the control panel. Click on the network connections icon, seen in figure 2.4. Continue on by opening the local area connection, then click properties when the status page appears. Once in properties, you will need to scroll down and double click on the internet protocol TCP IP selection. When this opens, click the advanced button to add the camera's IP address into the subnet, as in figure 2.7. Click Add when the Advanced TCP IP Setting dialog box appears. 
In this example, because the PoE camera's default IP address is 192.168.0.10, the subnet IP address range is required to be the same as the camera. For example, 192.168.0.x. The X can range from 0 to 255, but it cannot be 10 because that address is in use by the camera. Once you've decided on an IP address, insert it into the TCP IP address box as seen in Figure 2.9. Now your PC or laptop can access devices on the network that have an IP address starting in 192.168.0, for example, the camera. After these steps are completed, you can open your internet browser and insert the camera's IP address to view the video. To make additional changes to the PoE camera settings, use the default username and password to access the camera setup settings. Users can also remotely schedule video surveillance through the network if necessary. And that's it! Easy as pie! Now you're all set up and can start your own video surveillance project with an unmanaged PoE switch. Thanks for watching and Tara's Easy Setup Guide. Again, I'm Alyssa and Tara's Marketing Supervisor, and be sure to stay tuned with us for more Antara Easy Setup Guide videos in the future. Happy networking!